Hello, everybody. I just started Windows Mixed Reality, so the mic is now active. I started recording a few seconds before that, and you saw my mouse hover over the Windows Mixed Reality setting down here to get started. Uh, it should now be recording, and you should be hearing me. Uh, let me test that to make sure. Yep, I've got my microphone in here. Good, we're all set. So this is a demo to show how I start up... Uh, the order I start up to play games in with mix, Windows Mixed Reality uh, headsets uh, and Steam VR. Uh, so I'm going to go through a couple things. I've got my hand controller started, though you can't see that yet. Um, I'm recording in OBS so you can see this video. Uh, I like to, once I put my headset on, I like to set the volume that I'm going to use it in the game. One of the first things I do. Um, now, I have several things that I run that aren't necessary. I overclock my uh, graphics card a little bit, so I use this, and I like to log things, so I use this. You're not going to need any of that stuff. I use Joystick Gremlin to add a shift key and some sound things for my things. Uh, the main thing is that I've got a Windows Mixed Reality uh, for Steam VR shortcut here and I've got a Steam VR shortcut and I got a Steam shortcut and they're all on the desktop and you can make each of those to make your launch easier. I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch Steam. I'm recording the desktop only even though I'm in the headset looking at this. I'm looking at the desktop and that's what I'm recording right now. Uh, OBS will record uh, in the order that things are layered. So even though it says it's op recording open VR, it's not because that's not launched yet. Uh, that requires Steam VR. It's just capturing the desktop, and as soon as I launch Steam VR later, you'll see it'll automatically switch to this and record this. That's pretty cool. Okay, so here is Steam, and uh, so you can see uh, under Steam VR here, you can go here and click on it in your library. So I'm in Steam. I'm in the library on the desktop. I go to Steam VR, I right click, I go to manage, and I can say add desktop shortcut so that I can launch Steam VR from the shortcut. But if you're using a Windows Mixed Reality headset, you're not going to be launching Steam VR that way. You launch Steam VR by launching Windows Mixed Reality, which will automatically launch Steam VR for you. So here you'd go to manage and add desktop shortcut and then you'd be all set for both of those. That's this shortcut and this shortcut. And this is obviously just a Steam shortcut to launch Steam in general. Uh, some other things that are handy are if you're playing IL-2, having the SRS client for the, the radio. And Discord also is used for radios. TeamSpeak is used for radios. Uh, that's about it. Uh, okay, so to launch a game in Windows Mixed Reality, um, the first thing you would do is launch your headset, which we've already done. Where we're, I'm wearing the headset, my hand controller is on. You can't see it yet because it's not recording. That's recording the desktop, uh, and you can see that it's launched here. If I bring this up big, you can see I've set my room settings boundaries, but I like to turn the boundary off so it doesn't show up. I play mostly sitting simulations with this headset. So I play some flight sim. I'm almost entirely flight simulators now. I used to play a lot of racing games, i racing and other racing games. I just don't usually switch to both. You can see I've got a G2 headset. That's what I'm using right now. But previously I've used the Odyssey Plus and the Odyssey before that, and uh, all the headsets leading up to the Oculus headsets. I've got both the Quest and the Quest 2. I work in VR, so I do a lot of this. Uh, I would highly recommend the Quest 2 as an alternative to the G2. Both are excellent. If you're doing sit-down sims, the very best right now is the G2. But very close to it in quality of resolution is the Quest 2. Uh, if you can't stand Facebook, just make a fake Facebook account. Don't use it for anything else but the headset. It's totally worth it. For $299, you get 90% the quality of uh, the G2. The colors and brightness aren't nearly there. They're not. It's not. It's not as sharp, but it's just about as sharp. You can read just as about as much, and it works fantastically. It can even work wirelessly, which is a huge advantage. And you can use the Quest 2 in your bed, watching Netflix on the ceiling and controlling your computer from your bed. You can't do that with the G2, so it's kind of awesome. G2, very top of the line headset for uh, doing VR. So I'm getting off track here. I just wanted to show you how to launch things. Let's, uh, let's talk more about this. I got a low battery warning here. Uh, so we're, I'm assuming you know how to do mixed reality. You've set up mixed reality, but you're wondering about the order of things. So we've already set up our boundary. We turned off our boundary. 
you don't really need this anymore. I'm assuming you've gone through the other settings. One setting that is really good to note is uh, you do want it to switch to the audio and switch the headset mic on when in use. I want to make sure you had those set. Um, display settings, I use high, I use low resolution, and then I pause it. You never need to see the, the game playing in there, and I use best visual quality and the highest resolution. Okay, so... Um, under here, what I mean by that is you can see here now that I'm using my hand controller and stuff, but I pause this. Uh, we're going to be using Steam VR, and since we're using Steam VR, it does the very same thing this does. You don't want both of these running, taking resources, so I turn this off so this isn't updating, and then minimize it. And we're ready to launch uh, Steam VR, so we're going to launch Mixed Reality for Steam VR. I'm going to double click this, and I'm going to hold my hand controller up here, and you should be seeing it launching it, and it should have recorded that and switched to that. Give me one second here. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so now we're in Steam VR, uh, and you're looking at my hand controller. It should have switched smoothly over to this, um, and I'm clicking the hamburger button here. The G2 has some new buttons that the other ones don't have. The other ones, this uh, this dashed buttons, that hamburger, the sideway controller, it's next to the Windows button across them. You got your B, your A, your Windows button, and then you got your options. The options are the three horizontal lines. On the older controllers, uh, Samsung VR, for instance, uh, Samsung Odyssey and the Odyssey Plus, you push the joystick button in on that. The thumb joystick, push it in, it's that option button. Uh, that would bring it up. On here, you have a separate button. So bringing that up takes you out of your game and your VR world here. And it brings up this menu. Now, to get here, by default, it's going to launch you to this crazy Steam VR home that's incredibly complex and really hard to understand. To get rid of that, you go with your hand controller to options and settings here. And you go to startup shutdown, I think it is. No, general. At the bottom of general, turn Steam VR home off. That's what you want to get rid of. If you get rid of that, it takes you to this nice, simple interface, gets rid of that crazy home where you're trying to run around in VR and you're sitting in a chair. It's impossible to launch things. Hard to understand. It's Who wants to interpret how to launch games? I'd, I'd much rather get rid of their silly Steam VR home and Windows Mixed Reality has the same silly home. Get rid of those. Just have it here so that turn that off and you'll end up instead coming to this void space. And when you come to this void space, if you press your hamburger, you get this nice simple controls that allow you to control everything you need to. Here's the settings for Steam VR. Here's the volume for your microphone and your, your headphones. This resets the sitting position. As soon as you launch from Windows Mixed Reality, I recommend clicking this, looking straight ahead and level and setting it. That'll reset the view for your sitting simulation. Now you're set. And then you can, uh, go to library of games here that's to launch all your games that you might have you can go to the store here to buy new games uh here is wix reality settings this is if you have a mixed reality headset you'll have these settings and um i think the most important one is under graphics i disable uh reprojection because reprojection will lower your frames per second if you're not making it to to half the frames and it also has some weird artifacts that Windows Mixed Reality hasn't seemed to solve. So those weird artifacts, you get rid of it and you get higher frame rates. And I don't notice the problems of reprojection it seems perfect. I've got a 1080 Ti and I'm using the G2 and I get 45 plus frames per second. It looks great and there's no artifacts. So I've disabled reprojection. Uh, you can also force a DX mode. I don't. It seems fine with it off. I'm not sure the default is it works great i don't set anything else um this is where you can quit steam or that so you can quit your game which is currently steam or you can exit vr entirely that'll kill steam vr and this is the most important one this lets you see your desktop so clicking this now i can see my computer desktop you can see that i've launched steam vr here i'll just double click and obs here check it it is recording it is seeing my desktop so it did switch smoothly to the uh, Steam VR world, excellent. Going to minimize that. We're still recording. Going to minimize Steam VR. We're still time. Now, another way to get to the settings is with the Steam VR that came up when you opened it. If you click in this menu on the desktop, once you get here, these settings are much easier to control with the mouse um, and set the resolution and other things. 
then setting the settings down here at the bottom in this mode. I find this much more difficult to set using the hand controller than it is to uh, click here, look at the desktop, and go to the settings here. Now, if that thing was minimized, this, this guy was closed. Uh, oops, I just quit. I uh, apologize for that. Let me start it again. Start CMVR again. Apologize. I thought it would minimize. I should have minimized it instead of closing it, closing it, quit it. So I'm relaunching it. And since it's relaunched, I got to reset the seating position. Looking straight ahead and level. Boom. Seating position set. Go to my desktop. Okay. Minimize this instead of this. Close the settings. If that's gone and you can't see it at the bottom and you want to get to the Steam VR settings, this little VR guy here, you bring your go down to your clock and it's up carrot and you'll see VR in here. If you right click on it, you can go to settings. That's the Steam VR settings. It's much easier to set here and use your desktop mouse. Uh, and I'm still in my headset set looking at my desktop. So I wear the headset. I've got my hand controller here but I still find it easier to use the mouse and keyboard to set this stuff up because you can much more finely tune where this slider is for the resolution. And this is the important one. So for my headset, the resolution is really high. Um, I can't take advantage of that with my 1080 Ti all the way up. I, let's see, I think I have it set at 60 right now. I can tell, uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at 60. That's well above the actual resolution, but well below where they want to set it by default. Where they set it by default is at 100%. It's like... Uh, so default for my graphics card is 74%. And 100% is 3,000 pixels. The headset's only 2160 by 2160. Now you want to be at 1.3 times that but I can't quite achieve that. So I'm at 60%, which is a little below what's recommended, but it works great and I don't notice anything. Uh, so I've got that set to custom. I've got advanced shown here. That allows you to see more options. If you turn this off, it hides certain options. So to, to see this Steam VR home thing, you have to have that shown. I should have said that earlier, sorry. I'm making this on the fly. Custom resolution, I've set the resolution, go to video and you can, that locks it in and, and makes it set. Um, I have the render quality side. You can see, I'm just gonna kind of stop on each of these pages. You can kind of see how I have it set and you can play around with how you want to have it set. So I'll, that's the my resolution page. I'll stop here for a second or two. Play view, I don't really mess with this. Dashboard, I have everything on, position is far. Controllers, haven't messed with the controller bindings, but you can do that per game. Video, we just kind of set that up on the main page. We don't set that per game. I kind of just set it for all things. Audio, important to have this to headset, headset, and we're not mirroring it anywhere else. So your microphone is going to be the headset microphone. Your audio output device is going to go to the headset, so all sounds going to go to the headset. Startup shutdown. Um, here's where you can have extra overlay set. So you can have something like if you're using oculus games that you've bought and you want to run them in this headset revive lets you play those in steam vr so you turn that on and you see your oculus games from the oculus library not the steam vr library uh, advanced settings lets you would control advanced settings of steam vr uh, highly recommend it you can just look uh, up steam vr advanced settings and it's a plug-in overlay that you can download easy and add uh, this is where you would turn it on in the startup uh, Manage add-ons. This is for if you have an Oculus Quest, you would turn this on for virtual desktop streamer, which is, that's how you can play Steam VR games wirelessly in your Quest headset. Looks fantastic, works fantastic. Works actually better than o uh, Oculus Link does, where you use the USB with the Quest. It actually, Steam Desktop VR is even better and looks better and sharper and smoother. Uh, gamepad support. Um, I tend to leave that on. I don't know why that's off. Um, you can always restart Steam VR here and it'll restart it for you. And then there's some developer settings that you can set. Uh, here you can also set what the running time for it is. And currently it's set because we have a Windows Mixed Reality headset to OpenXR is running from that. The alternative would be to set Steam VR as the OpenXR runtime. But since we're using Mixed Reality headset, I figure we should be using uh, Windows Mixed Reality. Really, I don't see a difference between the two, but that's the way I've got it set. Microsoft and Steam and Valve all work together to make the G2 headset. So they're working on optimizing it. So I'm going to stick with Windows Mixed Reality while using this headset.
if I was using some other mixed reality headset, I might switch it to Steam VR. Uh, that's about it for the Steam settings. So once you have those all set the way you want, uh, if you change things a, a bunch, you probably want to restart Steam VR, and it'll restart for you. And then again, once you restart Steam VR, reset the seated position. First thing you do if you're in a seated game sim. Okay, go back to my desktop. Now I can see the desktop. Close my settings here. Minimize that. All right, so we've now launched. Uh, we've got Windows Mixed Reality going. We've got Steam VR going. We're recording Steam VR. We're seeing everything. The next thing to do after both of those are launched and all your sound settings and everything the way you like. And by the way, every time you restart this, you want to set your sound and make sure it's good. You're ready to launch your game. So I'm going to go ahead and launch IL2 and just show you how I'd get into the game. I'd wait till both all that other stuff was launched. Then I'd click, double click the game. It brings up the game. So I've got shortcuts on the desktop from Steam VR for my games because they're in the Steam library. So it, for some games. Now, now, these games are not in the Steam library because IL2 you can get on the Steam store and so you can get DCS. But updates come out for them much less frequently if you buy them on Steam. So I buy these games outside of Steam and buy the content that I want for these games, these flight simulators outside of Steam, and then just make a shortcut to the desktop to launch the game. And it'll, it, it would launch mixed reality for you, but it doesn't do a good job of it. So I like to be in the headset with all these things started first, and then I go ahead and I launch the game. So you can see I double clicked on it, it brought this up, I'll hit play, it's gonna launch the game. And I'm gonna have this hand controller handy because I'm still looking at the desktop of it launching. When I then see this middle thing here, I can go ahead and click on this middle thing and return to the game. And now I'm in VR looking at the game and my hand control has gone away and it's launching. And that's about it. I'm going to take us away from there because it's going to show my login screen and I don't really want to do that. All right. That's it. I'm going to 